Oh, let's make a video. So, weekly twit again. That happened, didn't it? Yeah, about that. Ha <laughs> ha uh, ha. Yeah, that's kind of disappointing. I was genuinely thinking, oh yeah, I'll be able to do videos every week there, because I'll be able to buy myself something new every week and talk about that, and it'll be really fun, and I just haven't had the time. And honestly, it, it's felt like it's been ages since I have put the camera on and just had a talk, and that's because it's just feeling like when it's pretty much just Saturdays, I've got to really do anything. It feels like a lot of the time I just want to sit and do nothing. Work is draining a lot of, not necessarily a lot of energy from me, um, but just feels like it's sapping away a lot of time that I would rather spend doing something like this and being creative and doing a little video and doing all of this kind of review spiel that is rolling around in the back of my head right now. I just don't feel like doing because it takes so long to do. But anyway, let's just have a little bit of a catch up now. I've got the camera on and um, yeah, I bought quite a bit since the last time I spoke to you. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what having a full paycheck does to you. Um, so, well, right now, because there's so much, so much I could be talking about and it would just go on for bloody ages. And there's some pretty choice stuff in there that really deserves its own video. Um, I'm gonna issue all this other stuff that I've bought and have yet to do anything with on camera. I bought just a few combinery bits because of course the last few twits I've done I've been talking about all the Autobot limbs like Prowl and them and getting that team together and the Combaticons and all that and now I have finished those so let's take a little jaunt into the world of finishing what feels like the last of the combiners I'm going to be finishing uh, and start off with Ironhide. I found him at a very chance encounter in Smythes. He was like the only combiner balls lad they had left. And I was like, oh, he's exactly what I would like to see. And he's all shiny and red and I really like him. What were you expecting? Just like all the other Autobots that make limbs like this guy, he's just really good. I mean, okay, it's probably not a definitive Ironhide, but I honestly don't think one of those exists. Even the Masterpiece one isn't like a definitive one to me. So, He's just a good Ironhide. He's the best one I've got in my house that's red. You know, he's better than the Universe one. He's just a cool, dynamic guy. He's a little bit skinnier than maybe you'd like for an Ironhide, but I think he cuts proportions nicely. He just looks, just looks proud and tall and slightly rugged. And he's got an Autobot badge on his belt, like it's some sort of shiny Texan belt buckle. And he's stood there with his hands on his hips, like, Ram! with his gravelly sudden drawl, and it just works. Head sculpt is maybe leaving me a little bit wanting because it's Ironhide, okay, but it kind of feels like it hits a couple of incorrect angles. I don't know, makes him look a bit young. Maybe this is Ironhide when he was younger. Who knows, who gives a monkeys? It's a red truck man. He can be Ironhide in my house because I look at this and it seems to hit enough notes of other iron hides. It makes it feel like, okay, okay, that's good. Because first iron hide I ever had, first proper like brand new Autobot I ever had was the R.I.D. Spy Changer iron hide, who was a pickup truck painted like a cow. And it just makes me want this painted in that like raw hide deco. Man, that would be good. And then of course Movie Ironhide was a truck like that as well. And this guy has got ports on his arms so you can stick cannons on there. If I could be bothered, I would dig out Prime Cups guns and stick them on here. And he'd be a fine, fine looking Ironhide that mixes lots of different things together. And I think with this scramble for G1 slavishness and accuracy, People have kind of forgotten that that was the initial mission statement of like classics and generations, making definitive versions of these characters, not just updating the G1 ones specifically. So all in all, Einheim's very nice. Have I said he's shiny? He's shiny. He's shiny and red. I like it. And on top of all that, he lets me finish this bloke off. Look at this. Isn't that wonderful? And come on, it's taken. I mean, considering the fact I got Optimus in the middle here before Christmas of 2014. It's taken a long time to put this together, but it works so well. It's so perfectly like 
1984 with these colours. It's like the blokes they picked for limbs. Once you put them together like this, it just feels right. It's all nice, stark, bright primary colours, yellow and blue and red and white. And it looks just slick. I want to see this happen again. I, I want this to be a thing. I want this to turn up in the Combined Wars anime thing, whenever the hell that's going to turn up, with some sort of insane Gatai sequence and just be the best thing ever. Because this is great! And it symbolises so much of what is good about Combined Wars, the fact that you just take some guys and stick them together and it works as well as this. So yeah, Ultra Prime, or is this one Optimus Maximus? Is, is it Optimus Maximus when it hasn't got the white chest? Uh, uh, oh, Ultra Optimus Grand Convoy Maximus here is just a lovely thing to behold. And if you don't like it, there's something wrong with you, to be honest. So that's Combiner Team 4 down and done with and finished and standing proud in a however many inches tall that is form on my coffee table, taking up way too much room, but at the same time, not as much room as five robots stood there individually would take up. Let's move on to team number five and the Combaticons, because I've got myself an onslaught. And where did I find him? Only bloody Sainsbury's. I was like, well, excuse me, sorry, what? The latest wave of Voyagers in a supermarket local to me. I don't have to pay like 25 quid for this, although I was perfectly prepared to. Yeah, it's, it's the Slaught Man. It's the Slaught. He's, is it green? I, I don't know how to describe this colour. It's greeny, bluey, very dark teal, khaki camo stuff. I don't know. Fun fact, the paint on his shoulders and his crotch is exactly the same green as Brawl's plastic, which is an interesting colour match, maybe? What can I say about him? He's a hotspot redo. He feels, uh, at the same time, a little bit more solid from like below the waist, and at the same time, much more rickety and floppy than a hotspot. Yeah, he certainly felt like the least solid Voyager as soon as I took him out of the box. It's like, oh, okay, I mean, these arms are a bit, yeah, that's bad. But the rest of him is a bit like, ooh, he's a little bit creaky, he's a little bit, ooh, I don't know. And like his head, uh, there's a ball joint in here, isn't there? He can't look up, my one can't look up. Pretty sure on the box, he's looking up. You no, know, all I can get out of this joint is round and round, and he used a joint to tuck it into his chest to make him look down, and that felt a bit bad. I really like all the stuff on his chest, all this biddly bully beep boop 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 stuff with the weird, I don't know, uh, odd computery mechanical electronic detail in his chest there. That just seems a bit silly because, you know, if, if all these are some sort of inner workings of him, right there, slap bang in the middle of his chest. I think I know where I'd be shooting. But either way, it's a nice way to uh, homage a, a G1 sticker, isn't it? Make it all sculpted detail and like five different paint apps in there. It's a nice visual centre to the thing because, yeah, the rest of him does look a bit bland, doesn't it? You know, it's just this off green and a couple of spots of purple. Don't really know why he's still got hotspot siren lights. Um, but then the black on him isn't just black, it's metallic black, which looks rather nice, and it's all more of that gunmetal stuff you got on the other Combaticons. And he just cuts a nice figure, doesn't he? And I always forget to flip out these heel spurs. So really, yeah, Onslaught's, Onslaught's nice, he hits the spot like he probably was bound to. It's all right, isn't it? When it comes to his alt mode, I do struggle to comprehend exactly what it is, because it's a big, long truck. Okay, the G11 was a big long truck, but it actually looked like a truck. This is just some sort of platform on wheels, and you've got literally all this stuff up the top, and it's like, what is this stuff supposed to be? There's, there's guns, there's, there's some guns here. They don't look as big as they should in amongst all this other cludge of metallic mass in the middle that's like... What is it? Is, is like this bit supposed to be some little droney thing that comes off and flies about? Is it? Is it like some sort of droney satellite launching thing? I, I really struggle to comprehend what it is and I've tried to do some Google image searching to try and find a real life vehicle that looks like Onslaught's Alt Mode I can't. So I'm like, you know, what's the inspiration for that thing? It looks, when you look at like the size of like these bits being the cabins, it looks bloody enormous, like a massive wrecking war machine. But I can't tell what it is. It's just a truck with 
a couple of guns on top that looks very big. But that's not the main event for this fellow, is it? But let's hang fire for a second until we get to the brute man and talk about the last component, Vortex. He's just very difficult to not see as like some sort of G2 Alpha Bravo. Ah, it's like Alpha Bravo has been playing the pre-paint game for this guy for so long, for more than a year. It just feels like, ah, I can't get to enjoying this as Vortex. It's just so... the same thing again. And I've already had it as Blades as well, and it's just kind of lacklustre. I like the colours. I really like these colours, actually. This grey that's all, you know, just sort of blackout helicopter, proper army grey. But then it's like, pow, purple and yellow and red and greenish stuff. It looks good, and it hits that G1 toy deco quite nicely. And I look at the Unite Warriors one, the Japanese Vortex, and it's like, when was he ever black and blue? I don't ever remember seeing him like that. But maybe I need to watch the cartoons some more. This is Vortex to me, I guess. If he's not like red and yellow, like the Fall of Cybertron one or, or the Energon one. I don't know. I, I'm just very much struggling to really enjoy this toy because it is just the same thing as Alpha Bravo that I've had for a year. And yes, Alpha Bravo, now that the, the end game of, of his play is here, so very, very obviously just there to be the repaint of Vortex that they made us buy by bringing that out as a new mould first diminishes from the enjoyment of this thing now he's finally here now you've finally got that thing that we've had for a whole year that you could see was going to be Vortex and now it is Vortex and it's like, ah, oh, uh, uh, what you got for me that's new? Nothing. Let it be known that Alpha Bravo is my least favourite deluxe from all of these so you know, it's not really spelling good fortune for Vortex in my household, but at least this is a bit more colourful, ever so slightly, if I really squint at it, more characterful, and he's an arm of Bruticus, so, you know, you kind of got to have him really, haven't you? He rounds out with Combaticons, it's a good military team, isn't it, at the end of the day, blah blah blah, stock comment. There's a helicopter with a jet and a tank and a jeep and a truck. It all feels good once you put it all together as a fivesome. And, well, let's just get to the good bit and make him an arm, shall we? Oh, Lord, it's the Bruticus. Yes. Here I have finally in my hands a big old dumb wrecking machine made of military drab brown and dark green and grey and it looks kind of boring in certain lights but I flippin' love it. Look at this massive thing, I'm trying to get the chest to glint properly so you see the symbol nicely and it just doesn't it look nice. First off, it just, oh, it just feels like a properly well done combiner lad simply because of the fact that there's just some better stuff going on with the proportions, like it actually looks like he's got a waist and it actually looks like he's got proper knees because the thighs kind of get thinner down here before it gets down to his shins. I haven't got that thing that Defensor kind of looked a bit odd for by making the, the tops of his thighs look like some sort of hip guard thing because that's this bit here and it can go out of the way for strange reasons. And it's big silver wing chest square flat bit with a big old shiny badge on there and hunching shoulders and yes his his arms actually do look far too long really you know it's like the Fall of Cybertron one had the issue with Blast Off being a really long arm and he's still a really long arm you know if that was all stretched out properly it'd be down past his knee that's not how arms work but you know get it all posed right click those hips back once. Click those arms back once. Point his ball jointed head down and he just hits a stance which is like boosh. That's how you do it. Yes this is this is a lovely thing and in a way Bruticus feels like the only combiner where you, you really have to set him up the same way every time which is a bit of a, a kind of contradictory thing with Combiner Wars being the whole mix and match thing. It really doesn't feel right sticking other limbs on here, and it really doesn't feel right making 
blast off a vortex legs, even though they make really good legs, and these guys make really good arms. It's just like this is Bruticus. This is Bruticus and how he should be, and he looks really good for it, and he's a good bit of fun. Maybe those cannons behind his ears should be a bit bigger. Um, maybe his head should have been silver, because I don't really know why it's black. But again, it's not black, because nothing in this set of lads is actually black apart from wheels. It's gunmetal. It's shiny gunmetal. With those red eyes and the looming brow and the mouth plate with this pointy chin. That's a perfect head sculpt. Doesn't matter how it's painted, the sculpt here is spot flipping on. And then the fact it's on a ball joint, I mean, it's, it's a little bit limited, you know, you can look up by like one degree and then look down a bit to peer past his chest at lesser beings and you get it twisting around and it, it mine makes a horrible kind of noise. You probably can't hear it, but it's like a kind of creaky noise and it makes me worried that something in there will break and his head will suddenly snap off one day. Which is a bit scary. And then of course you can go and give him shockwave as a gun or stick it on his back in a very kind of precarious connection. I guess maybe the only thing I don't like is how this bit where the guns go on his back. Well, for a start, it untabs really easily and then you end up like dislodging his head, but it doesn't fold down all the way flat to his back. So it feels like, you know, if, if this were to fall off a high shelf and land on this bit here, that would just snap off because it folds to there there's like, you know, half an inch gap between it and Onslaught's body. And that feels a bit bad. Like, it should clip and stay and not feel like it's stressing this piece here every time I go to pick it up and, in, you know, inevitably grab it by that bit and push against it and make it bend like this. Ooh. But, you know, as soon as you know how to handle this thing, and you know how to pose it, and you know how to make him just look flipping good, ah, <sighs> Bruticus wins, and he may be, for he probably is going, yeah, he's going to be, I'm, I'm not going to bother with Sky Rain. This is the last combine I'm going to put together out of separate pieces that I buy bit by bit, and damn, if it wasn't worth the wait. Yeah, man, it's good. Although, if you want to get into technicalities, that's not the last combiner team I've properly completed because only last night I went into Tesco's and suddenly found they'd moved all the toys around and there were like a handful more Transformers on the shelf and they'd suddenly out of nowhere, well, restock loads of bloody Age of Extinction cack, but also Combiner Wars Legends figures, which I've not seen in a shop for a very long time and despite the price, I thought I'd cave and get groove. I have not wanted this guy from the start. I've not really wanted this guy because I looked at him and just thought, what is going on here? This is a design which didn't need to look like this. He's too long. Why is he so long? I can relate. Okay, yeah, I can relate to these proportions. He's 90% leg. I probably am. And I'd probably turn into a bike. But uh, it didn't need to be this long, did he? You know, uh, these feet down here. If that ankle bit sucked into his shin and there was just feet and shin and not this massive gap, this gulf <laughs> between his feet and his legs, I think that would solve a lot of problems. But then his thighs are particularly long as well. It's not something you often get on Transformers, overly long thighs, because, you know, the regular set of proportions for the robot like that is to have short thighs, big, thick, long shins, gives you that kind of <laughs> hero proportion. Um, so... It's kind of nice to have something with long thighs like that, but he just looks a bit, you know, crazy. It's kind of dynamic for all kind of like ninjury, kung fu bike man stuff. It's a little bit much, and it just feels like his legs didn't need to be this long because the bike mode is that long, because the bike mode doesn't need to be as long as it is either. It just feels like in both cases you could just shave a good half an inch off him, and he'd probably look a little bit better for it. But that would make him even smaller than he already is, and he is a little bit smaller than most of the other Legends guys. Just because he's skinny and there's just not a lot to him and there's not a lot going on and there's no weaponry. But I can appreciate some of the design touches now I've actually got him in hand. Yeah, okay, it's kind of cool. It's like you take G1 Groove and put him through a 21st century filter and he's got the kind of windshield on his chest and it's all kind of smooth bits and cool angles and 
He's still got essentially the wheel in between his shins like the old G1 one would, but it's split in half and it's it's dynamic. But I just take one look at this and wish wish that it had been repainted into Armada sideways because it's got the windshield round bit on his chest and you've got like handlebars up here which maybe if you were to squint you could imagine a poking out of his ears and uh, long, long, strangely shaped legs with strangely shaped feet. It feels like it could have been sideways and uh, why wasn't it? Please, some point. Cara, bless us with a full combiner team that is just our martyr guys. This needs to be in it. And as he is, as he's Groove, and as he's he's not the deluxe one that everyone wishes they could suddenly go to Taiwan and get now, which I just don't care for. It, it, it's all right, you know. He's he's modern. He's cool. He's not slavishly G one. There's stuff going on here which which is appreciable. But at the same time, I just take one look at him overall and think, what's going on? And then you get even more into what's going on when you realise he's got a port on one side and a post on the other. And it's not like it's for a third mode where you turn his legs around and clip them together because they're not level. They don't, they don't sit straight. So what's that about? Can someone please tell me? Can someone please ask Hasbro at BotCon what this is for? Because it's not when you stick him on Defense Hall's chest, it's like, okay, I, I could appreciate giving him a port, so you could stick a gun on there, you know, most of the other Legends guys like this have got a port on them somewhere that's left over from the camera with the little MicroMaster guys, so it just feels alright, you know, give him, I don't know, Ironhide's axe, yeah, he's, he's got a weapon, and then you make him a bike, stick it on the side, there we go, but what's this for? What's this for so you can have defense or literally hold a bike and whirl it around like a club to hit people maybe that's why he's so long as a bike i don't really know it bugs me and it, it's just kind of making me think about fan modey stuff and every now and then fan modes are fun aren't they when you make them when you make a fan mode just uh, just want to transform groove here which is very simple but i'm i'm really making a bit of a cat can effort of it because I'm trying to speak on camera at the same time. Um, when you do a fan mode, please keep it in your own house. Sorry, um, I'm not a big fan of, of people saying, oh look at this cool fan mode I've done. Doesn't that make it look better? No, it doesn't. Sorry. 99% of fan modes I look at, it's like, maybe that appeals to you. Keep it in your own house. I'll keep it in my house. I'm not going to show you any strange fan modes I make because I don't really make them. But there, he's a bike. He's too long. I don't think I'm going to be able to have any figures that sit on this properly because what's going on? You'd, you'd have to literally lie down on it to drive it. The seat's here, but the handlebars are here, and it just feels like it's going to hurt your back riding this bike, isn't it? And it's futury because it's got the wheel in this hub like that, and a bit annoying you can't do wheelies because of all this scuff up the back. But I like the sheriff's badge. But yeah, just to demonstrate what's running through my mind, the massive enigma that this port and post deal causes, which I realise I'm talking about more than the actual figure now, it's just like, so let's take Defensor, hello Defensor, hello. Um, I've got a shiny Mactech gun here that I got, that Kapow sent me for free because I got some stuff out of their sale. Which is nice and, I have to stop myself from doing that for about 10 minutes every time I look at it. Um, like what, you're supposed to, Stick groove on here. That's how you combine him, right? Just stick him on there. Stick a bike on on someone's arm, and and maybe maybe you know just for good measure, let's stick another axe on there. I suppose I need to have a bit more of a muck around because I only got him yesterday. Um, but maybe uh, I don't know. I know there's ways of fan moding him onto Rook to make a leg that looks like Groove is there as a leg. Um, but I, I'm looking at this and thinking maybe it's intended for something, something a little bit more G1 in terms of combining things, but I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just so you can stick him on there like that. I don't know. At least now I can give Defence all those peck implants he's been looking at for a while. Yeah, that, that works, that's all right. It's nice to add a bit more stuff to him. I mean, I, I like the way his chest looks anyway, because you get the shiny bits and the stripes, but adding a couple of sheriff's badges and a, a wheelie bit and a 
glass bit, it would break if he was in a fight. Um, and I said, that's alright, and it's a nice solid connection, more than you can say about Blackjack or Rodimus. So, that's, that's decent. It feels like, just with all the other teams that I have ended up getting a sixth little member for, and Defence always not one axe, I refuse to buy a groove. Now I've got that, it just feels like, yeah, it adds a little bit of something. A bit of fun, a nice little element of scale between the team, and it's nice just to have a little guy there. And if you want, you can stick him on and make a combiner out of six things, and it's just, just options and a bit more fun. Yeah, I, I, I like this, that's alright. So there we go, catching up with combining things. Still so much, so much that I want to talk to you about and need to and reviews that I really need to get my finger out and get together. But that's for another day. Today was just that. A few combiner lads, wrapping up some things which I've spoken about previously, finishing off some teams, feeling good that I've spent all this money and got these bloody massive things that now take up too much room to have all in one place and it's like oh god i'm still gonna buy like another two of them maybe oh, i've got another one on the way because i pre-ordered grand galvatron didn't i <laughs> that's only about that yeah yeah i've pre ordered that yeah of course i did i spent 125 quid just for an armada thrust um anyway that's that and I shall see you soon with something hopefully rather nice that I've had in the back of my head for ages and has taken spending 90 quid on a big box or something to bring into fruition and reality in a video sense. So I'm not going to say keep an eye out for that because when I do that it curses the actual production of that video at a later date. So whatever. Time to step into the like what? three or four month gulf between the end of Combine Wars and the beginning of Time's Return where there's like nothing new left to buy unless you want to lower yourself into the pit of repaints you don't need which I'm very, very close to circling so please stop me Keep an ear out for the tf 4 c Podcast podcast Wink, 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 winking And I'll see you later Wearing the world's biggest pair of white white fronts.